the new iPad Pro claims to be faster than 92% of portable PCs. It promises to do more than any other tablet and connect to more devices than ever before. Today I'm off to meet three professional creative types who rely heavily on their laptops for work. I want to see if I can persuade them to switch to the iPad Pro. First up, I'm at Yamination Studios in Birmingham, where award-winning animator Drew Roper... Drew, hello. Hi, John. ...uses plasticine models to make lovely short films. This is Mini John. Wow, very flattering, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew currently uses a MacBook and a Wacom drawing tablet and pen for his digital sketches. Naturally, you would draw and, and you look at where you draw, but with this, you have to look at a screen Mm. and not where your hand's going. Yeah, so do you think a tablet could conceivably be able to help with that? Absolutely. You've got an improved version of uh, Apple's Pencil. Let me know what you think. Once connected to your iPad via Bluetooth... Very good. ..the Apple Pencil allows you to draw straight onto the pad's screen. It's very smooth and fluid. And you can vary things like the pressure, nib size and type of brush. So it's still got a very high frequency display, so you get more immediate feedback from the drawing. Yeah, it's very impressive. Your creative thoughts are being translated properly to the screen. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, Mini Jean would agree, first impressions are positive for Drew, but can the iPad Pro match his studio setup? So, Welcome to the wonderful where world plasticine of sort of comes motion. alive, yes? Yes. Once Drew has sketched his characters, he moulds them out of plasticine, and the stop motion animation films are created frame by frame using a DSLR camera, with tiny adjustments to his figures in between. He then manipulates these images on his laptop and stitches them all together to create a short film. But can the iPad Pro cope with this amount of processing? So let's import okay. all 800 odd of them. We're loading the images into an app called Stop Motion Studio. There he is. Yeah, it's very really good. It's designed for animation and seems to be faring quite well. It's done a great job of automatically assembling all that. Yeah. The iPad Pro runs the Apple A12X Bionic processor, so it should make light work of creating stop-motion animation. Well, let's try exporting it in uh, 4K. Put the processing power to the test. Sure, let's give it a whirl. It's quite quick. I'm quite surprised, actually. 4K usually takes a lot longer. So, the key question, would you swap your laptop for one of these? Looking at files, it's fantastic. And the drawing, it's much easier to do when you've got the screen in front of you but I don't think it can replace the way we shoot and do animation. OK, so it's 1-0 to the laptop. Seconds out, round two. Once an exclusive club, now anyone can make their own music thanks to advances in digital technology. But can this tablet offer enough grunt to assist the next Calvin Harris or Quincy Jones? This is Johnny Amos, songwriter, producer, sound designer and session musician for Don Henley back in the day. He uses a laptop for the majority of his music creation. Johnny, hello. Hi, John. Hi. I want to find out if the iPad Pro can replace it. OK, so this particular piece of software I'm using here is called Ableton Live. Yep. And I use a MIDI keyboard like this to trigger sounds inside the actual piece of software. Ooh. <laughs> yes, very good. So have you ever considered using an iPad Pro for your music? No! Johnny's MIDI connects to the iPad via USB-C, but there's a problem. The Ableton Live software that he uses isn't available as an iPad app, and you can't download the full version onto the iPad. Instead, I've installed Beatmaker 3, but will it be good enough to tempt him? It looks like a great piece of software. Wow, there's a lot of different controls. This is impressive. Result! It's about a tenth of the price of Ableton Live, this app. Well, that, even more of a reason then. <laughs> mm. Mm, that's good. What do you think of the sound quality of the speakers compared to the laptop? Uh, yeah, good. The sharpness and the brightness is there. It sounds decent enough for me to be able to work with. Um, and also the fact that it's got a touch screen means you can actually possibly dispense with that. Yes. So far, so good. Now it's time for me to sit back and watch the master at work. Johnny's going to make some sweet, sweet music for me on the iPad Pro. So the big question, now you've had a play with iPad Pro, could it conceivably replace your laptop? 
No. A lot of the fun, on-the-go, beat-making kind of roles can be done with this. Mm. Uh, but when it comes to mixing, it's handling three or four tracks really well, but 24, 25 tracks, probably not. So, after two rounds, the laptop's still in the lead. Time for round three. This is award-winning lifestyle and parenting blogger Emily Leary. She's always out and about, writing articles and updating her blog, using bulky laptops and cameras. With the 12.9-inch iPad Pro weighing just 630 grams without any accessories and incorporating a 12.1 megapixel camera, it's smaller and better formed than Emily's current setup. But the question is, can it take its place? Emily, hello. Are you mid blog post at the moment? I am. I am writing up a review of this lovely pizza place. How do you fancy changing your laptop for an iPad Pro? OK, willing to give it a go? Good. First things first, Emily's doing a quick interview. So, Sophie, you tell me a little bit... But instead of recording the chat, she's making notes using the Apple Pencil. There's a lot of sort of Indian... And this is where the split-screen functionality of the iPad Pro really comes into its own. So while she's writing the notes, she's also got the restaurant's website on the right-hand side if she needs to refer to it. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Interview done, now it's time for some pictures. And for that, we need pizza. So one must discipline oneself not to eat it yet, but to photograph it. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Emily normally uses a Canon DSLR camera to take photos for her website and blog. Close up. Yes. How does the iPad Pro's 12.1 megapixel camera compare? Ooh. They're not bad. The colour is pretty true. Ooh. I've downloaded the Lightroom app onto the iPad for Emily to enhance her pizza pictures. You might play with the exposure a little bit. She currently uses the full Lightroom software on her laptop, so she's in familiar territory. Mm. Extra saturation. Just to make it look mm. appetising. That's vibrant. Oh, that's quite nice. And it's all looking pizza perfect. Mm. Time to write it all up, and I've brought along the Apple Smart Keyboard Folio. Ooh. Yeah, I'm liking this so far. Huh. And it's nice to type on as well. It's actually quite comfortable. Insert, That's yeah, insert. good. In no time, Emily's article is ready to publish. And I do like that you mm. can use the keyboard and you can interact on the screen. So, the crucial question is, could it replace your laptop? Um, well, it's definitely lighter and more compact. I really like the keyboard. Um, for the most part, the apps are the same as I already use on my laptop, which I really like. So, yeah, I think it could. Interesting. But with a final score of two to one, the iPad Pro isn't quite ready to replace our trusty laptops just yet.